Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and today I'm just here to offer a kind of brief overview on the practice of sifting enamel. Um, we're going to talk about sifting in general, and then we're going to dive in a little bit deeper and talk about the different meshes that sifters come into, um, when you should use which mesh, and what's a good sign that you might not be using the right mesh. So first things first, um, safety, uh, you're going to be agitating very finely ground glass and some of it might kick up into the air. So you wanna make sure you're protecting yourself with a respirator or a dust mask. So let's start off by just talking about sifting as a practice in general. Um, like any enameling, you wanna start off by making sure that the metal you're gonna be applying the enamel to is clean. Um, in this case today, I'm working with these uh, enameling squares, um, but this applies if, if you're working with copper, um, fine silver, whatever, you wanna make sure it's clean. If there's any grease, the enamel's gonna peel away um, and it's not gonna get a good surface. So I just have some surfactant here, and a little bit goes a long way. I usually will just apply a blob, um, blob, technical term, very specific quantity, um, kind of rub it in, apply it, and then at this point I go over to my sink and I will rinse this off. So once you've washed and dried your metal that you're gonna be applying enamel to, you have the option to um, either apply something to help the sifted enamel stick, um, or some people don't like to use this, but um, again, something to kind of experiment with in your practice. Uh, this is clear fire that's been mixed with some water and it's in a little spray bottle for application. Um, and you just spray it on your piece prior to sifting on the enamel. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help the enamel stick on the way in and out of the kiln. Um, if you just sift the enamel on and you don't have a super steady hand, you can kind of jostle it um, and it'll kind of fall off the edges or be disrupted. Um, the clear fire just gives the enamel something to stick to. If you do use the clear fire, you have to make sure that you thoroughly dry your piece before you firing it um, because the rapid evaporation of this moisture is gonna cause enamel to kind of flick off and you'll have some bare spots. Um, some people just use uh, kind of like, this process does generate a little bit of static, um, so you don't have to use the clear fire. Um, the enamel does kind of have a little static cling Totally preference, um, I just wanted to throw it out there to help you guys get started with your enameling practice. So I've rinsed this, my metal's clean, my hands are also clean. Um, sometimes if you have some grease residue on your fingers and then you're holding like this on your way in or out of the kiln, um, you can kind of ruin your surface there as well. So clean hands, clean metal, we're ready to go. No matter what mesh sifter you're using, you wanna fill your sifter to only about a third of the way full. Um, sifting relies on agitation and movement of the enamel to fall through in order to get a nice even coat. Um, and if you put too much enamel in there, uh, you're not going to be able to move it around very well and the additional weight is going to compress the movement and it's just going to um, kind of lower the output potential of your sifter. So I've um, got my enamel here. Again, we're loading it up about a third of the way, so there's still plenty of room. And then when you're sifting, um, you can either tap along the side here, or these sifters have a twisted wire here and you can run your fingernail along the wire. Um, personal preference, whichever you like best, um, you just need to create movement for the enamel to shift and fall through. When you're um, sifting, you're gonna notice that when, you're, um, when you do agitate and it falls through, it's gonna be denser in the middle. Um, so here you can kind of see, um, I made a little sample to illustrate this. When it falls through, it's densest in the center, and then sure, you're applying enamel out here, but it's not as thick. So um, I think a mistake that a lot of people make when they're just getting started with enameling practice is they don't overlap enough. And what that ends up looking like is something like this. Um, it's really visible here because I did a red, but if you're working with like a yellow on white or something, um, it might not be as apparent until you fire it, you get it out, and you're kind of moving it around, and you're like, oh, there's, there's kind of some thin spots here. So overlapping is key to getting a nice, even coat. So um, while you might be tempted to, okay, I put my enamel here, so I'm gonna scoot over, that's not, that's not really gonna do it for you. Um, a more successful coat of enamel will have a good bit of overlap. So um, you also wanna make sure that you're starting kind of far on the outside edge here. Like I'm not thinking, okay, I'm putting my enamel on. I'm kind of starting out and starting on that edge. 
And then instead of scooting all the way over here, I'm going to overlap. And that's going to end up being a much more successful coat of enamel for you. So regardless of the mesh size that you're using, um, those are just some introductory things to keep in mind when sifting enamel. Um, if you feel like for whatever reason you're not getting enough enamel coming through, um, some people like to put copper pennies in their sifters and that helps with agitation as well. Um, but I find that I usually don't need that unless I'm working with a really fine mesh. Um, again, it's just kind of personal preference, but that's another thing that you can do when you're sifting. So now that we've talked generally about sifting as a practice, let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about mesh. So these sifters have mesh applied to the bottom here and the mesh refers to the number of openings per linear inch. So the 80 mesh sifter has 80 openings per linear inch. And then the 325 has 325. So the higher number, the finer the mesh. So depending on what you're trying to do with enamel, you may want to choose a different mesh. Um, for laying down base coats, uh, 80 mesh is perfect um, because the enamel is actually sold with the average size of 80. So when you're just laying down a base coat, 80 mesh is a perfect application. It falls through really readily. Um, you're not having to do a bunch of overlap to get one coat. Um, so 80 mesh is ideal for base coats. As a contrast, say you were starting off and you just bought a sifter. Um, you bought 200 mesh and you're trying to lay down a base coat of enamel it's gonna take you a while. You would have to go over this many, many times. Even if you were to add a penny, it's still gonna take you a really, really long time. And that's just gonna make your life harder. So for base coats, working with a sifter like 80 is ideal. So when would you use a different mesh count besides 80? We sell 100, 150, 200, and 325, and all of those have purposes. Um, so let's start off with the, I kind of feel like these guys kind of live in a, a family. They're sort of a little range, 100, 150, and 200. Those are really good for stencils and applying details. So I'm gonna grab a new square here, hop over my enamel. Get some others loaded up, so we're good to go. So when you're applying enamel through stencils, um, you don't want to use an 80 mesh or something heavy because um, A, a lot of material is able to fall through at once, so it's kind of hard if you're working with a um, detailed or delicate stencil. Uh, you're going to get a lot more material than you want, um, and it's just going to end up looking kind of sloppy and rough. But also, the size of particle that's able to fall through an 80 um, is going to be a much larger particle than is able to fall through a 200. So sometimes images end up looking um, kind of pixely when they're stenciled on through an 80 because the larger particles are kind of falling next to each other um, and it, it, they aren't able to settle really closely and get a nice edge. So instead, um, and this kind of depends on what type of stencil you're using, you're going to want to work with um, either 100, 150, or 200. Um, for something like this, it's pretty open, there's not a ton of detail. Um, you maybe could get away with an 80, but something like 100, you're gonna have more control with, um, and I'll demonstrate that. I'm gonna prep with a little clear fire. See how it's not coming out quite as fast as it does with the 80? That just gives you a little more control um, which is good for stenciling, especially if like, say you were gonna kind of blend this out and you wanted it to start over there and then kind of have the pattern taper off. Um, using a lower mesh count just gives you a little more control. But then, ooh, say you were going to work with a fine stencil, um, something like one of these two. Um, in my sample here, I have the same stencil, same enamel, same everything, just one was sifted with an 80 mesh and then this one was sifted with a 150. 
Um, and things just end up looking crisper and cleaner because again, the smaller enamel particle size and how closely they're able to lay next to each other. And I'm not laying down as much material. So this is kind of a good example of a stencil that you would want to use a more fine sifter with. Um, it's got more delicate lines, smaller spaces to fill, and for something like this, you could break out the 200 or the 150. And I'm just using enamel straight from the um, jar here. I haven't pre-sized it, uh, but if you were doing a lot of enameling um, and stenciling, uh, it'll come out a little bit easier if you pre-size your enamel to sifting it. And I'll talk about that a little bit more after this. So you can see how not a lot of material is coming out. Um, and that's because I haven't pre-sized it. But you can also see how the enamel that is coming through is very, very fine. And it's gonna be a nice, crisp layer of enamel here. The pattern's gonna look great. So at this point, no more enamel is coming through my sifter. It's because all the enamel that's left in there is larger particle size than my mesh here. So at this point, I'm gonna dump it into one of my larger sifters. And then um, we'll talk about sizing enamel. So really quickly, um, I'm gonna size some enamel so we can put it back into the sifter and you can see how it'll come out a little more readily when you pre-size your enamel. So when you're working with these smaller sifters, um, it can be helpful to pre-size your enamel. And Cool Tools sells these uh, enamel sifting kits, um, and it just allows you to size your enamel particles. So you can already kind of see here, um, I pre-sifted this one to 200, and this one kind of looks a little bit like iodized salt, and this looks a little more like powdered sugar. Um, it's much more fine. It's gonna come through that sifter a lot more readily. Uh, it's super quick and easy to do. Um, I'll just demonstrate it really quick. You've got a pan that's going to be kind of your catch pan and your collector. And say I want to size my enamel to 200 again. I want a little bit more of that. You put whatever mesh you um, want to size to on top of there. Toss in a couple pennies. Throw in some enamel. Put this one on top, that way you're not just shaking and getting unnecessary enamel into the air. And then you're just side by side. And then I kind of give it a minute to settle a little bit before I take the lid off. And then all the enamel that was too large to pass through stays on top, and then anything that is 200 or smaller falls through. So now I usually just dump onto a sheet of paper. And then we can load up our sifter with this material. So I'm gonna bring this guy back and again. I'm gonna put them in my 200 that I was working with earlier. And since it's been pre-sized, it's gonna fall through a lot more readily. So if you've got a lot of stenciling to be doing, um, it's good to pre-size your enamel. If you're just doing a tiny little accent really quick, enough will fall through that you can get away with not sizing. But if you're doing a lot of stenciling, pre-sizing your enamel to whatever sifter you're using is helpful. All right, so because I was working with a fine particle size, all my lines are really crisp and this pattern looks great. Um, another use that you would have for uh, 200 mesh enamel um, would be if you're working with stamps. So we have a whole um, video that's already been published on YouTube that covers enameling with stamps, if this process interests you at all. But basically you're applying some sort of enameling agent um, to the stamp, applying it to your metal, and then you sift over top and then tap and dump off the excess. And with these stamps, since they're super fine line, um, you wanna work with a fine powdered enamel to make sure that you're getting all the detail. So the 100, 150, and 200 are great for accents, details, and stencils and stamps, kind of depending upon um, how specific 
or um, I guess delicate the pattern of your stencil is. So 325 kind of lives in a family of its own because it is so fine. Um, here just is a sample. Um, I have a red background that I've sifted some white on top of and it is just um, kind of hazy looking, which can be beautiful uh, if that's what you're after. Um, and because it is so fine, um, you can also use it with very, very, very fine stencils. Um, like I say, you were, you were sifting through a doily um, or something like that, 325 would work well for that. Um, if you are working with 325, you do have to size your enamel. Here's some straight out of the jar. Um, it's just gonna, you're not gonna be getting anything. Um, super slow moving, don't do that to yourself. So for 325, um, I've got some pre-sized. And you can see it come through. And again, it is just almost like a mist. Um, very, very fine. Um, so again, great for super, super fine stencils. Um, another thing that it, uh, what I learned to use a 325 with um, was grisaille enameling. Um, I've got a sample here. Uh, it's a portrait um, built up of a lot of very fine layers, um, and that kind of helped you allude to depth. Uh, so for this um, portrait, I had some hand cut stencils from paper um, that were very delicate and fine that I was sifting through. So 325 is kind of specialized sifter. Um, don't use it a lot, but when you need it, you really need it. So one last thing to cover about sifters um, is their size. Uh, something smaller like this is ideal for um, basically kind of jewelry scale, I would consider jewelry enamel objects. Um, whereas something like this, if you're doing something a little bit larger, um, it's a little helpful to have a larger sifter because you don't have to do as many passes. Um, certainly you could use the sifter, you'll just have to do a lot more back and forth. Um, so for larger projects, use a larger sifter. Sifting is a great way to get started with your enameling practice, and I hope that this video helps to lend clarity on when you should be using which sifters.